Is Monzo Plus worth it? In my opinion, maybe. Monzo Plus is one of two premium accounts that Monzo offers. It costs five pounds per month and it includes extra features that are not included in the free account. Monzo have actually launched Monzo Plus twice. The first time was in April, 2019, but after they got quite a lot of poor customer feedback, they shut the service down five months later. One of the problems that they had was that the features on offer were, in my opinion, laughable. They relaunched Plus in July 2020, and finally, they've got some better features. However, the problem this time is that a lot of features that Plus offers can be found elsewhere for free. At first glance, trying to convince people who are not used to paying for their bank account to shell out five pounds per month for features that they can mostly get elsewhere for free does seem like a bit of a terrible proposition. But before writing Monzo Plus off, let's give it a fair chance by looking at what's on offer in a little bit more detail. So let's look at the Monzo Plus features and compare them not only against their own free account, but also against some of its competitors. I'll give you my opinion as to whether I think each feature adds value or not. And at the end, I'll give you my opinion as to whether I think the good features make it worth the five pounds a month subscription. Feature number one allows you to add your accounts from other banks into your Monzo account so that you can see all your balances in one place. To some people, this might sound like a revolutionary feature that's been developed by Monzo, but it's actually been made possible by open banking, which without going off on a tangent means that you can now share your transaction data with third parties. Now, I'm glad that Monzo have implemented this feature, but considering that most high street banks let you add other bank accounts into your account for free, I do feel like this should have been included in the free Monzo account. However, this is still a step up on Starling, who to the best of my knowledge, don't allow you to add accounts from other banks at all. In my opinion, this is a valuable feature as seeing all your balances in one place does help with money management. But I feel like making us pay for a feature, which was one of the key elements of open banking, which was originally designed to increase competitiveness in the banking sector and therefore make challenger banks like Monzo be able to compete with the traditional banks seems a bit backwards to me. Feature number two means that you'll now earn 1% interest on all the money in your account. One of my main annoyances with Monzo's free account is that you don't earn any interest on any money that's sitting in your regular pots. I find it particularly frustrating because pots is one of the best money management features that Monzo offers. Yet, if I want to use them, I have to sacrifice earning interest on the money that I've put in the pots. Subscribing to Plus means that you won't have to make that sacrifice anymore because you'll earn interest on your main balance and on all the money in your regular pots, which is a valuable upgrade. However, it's not as good when compared to Starling, where you earn interest across your whole account, including spaces, without having to pay a monthly fee. The real value of this perk comes with the 1% interest that you can earn on balances up to £2,000. If you have £2,000 in your account, you'll earn around £20 per year in interest, which effectively reduces the cost of the account from £60 a year to £40. I'll come back to this point a little bit later on in the video. Feature number three is that you get given a holographic debit card, which is exclusive to Monzo Plus. My card is going to be hidden away in my wallet 99.9% .9 of the time. Having a fancy card is not something I personally care about at all. So in my opinion, this doesn't add any value whatsoever. Feature number four is the ability to create custom spending categories. I love anything that will allow me to tailor a service to my specific needs. The current categories on offer are great, but being able to add my own that are more specific to my spending is a feature that I love. You can even split a single transaction into multiple categories. This helps make your spending insights more accurate and therefore makes it easier for you to manage your money. Compared to competitors, I've not been able to find anybody that lets you split one transaction over more than one category or that lets you create your own custom categories. In my opinion, this is one of the most valuable features on offer. Feature number five is the ability to use virtual debit cards. Monzo Plus gives you the option of having up to five virtual debit cards, and each card has its own unique set of details. These virtual cards are great when it comes to protecting yourself when shopping online. When you buy something online, instead of giving the details of your actual physical card, you can use the details of one of your virtual cards instead. This means that if the details of one of your virtual cards are stolen by fraudsters, you can just go ahead and cancel that card without having to go through the hassle of cancelling your physical card and all the headaches that that brings. Also, if you've got any online services that are being paid using your virtual card, 
and your physical card gets stolen, you don't have to cancel all those online services. They can continue to run using your virtual card and in the meantime, you can reorder your physical card without interrupting your online services. Now, Revolut does offer virtual cards on their free standard plan. However, as Revolut isn't a proper bank, Yes, I know they do have a European banking license and they have recently applied for their UK banking license. Until that license has been granted, I don't feel like comparing them to Monzo is a like for like comparison. Therefore, we can count virtual cards as a feature that only Monzo Plus offers. And in my opinion, it is a very valuable feature. Feature number six allows you to use advanced roundups. As you probably know, roundups help you save money by rounding up your transactions to the nearest pound and putting that spare change into a pot. So if you buy a coffee for £1.80, that transaction will get rounded up to £2 and the 20p will be put into one of your pots. With advanced roundups, you can add a multiplier of two, five, or 10 times to the spare change. So in this example, you could round the 20p spare change to 40p, one pounds or two pounds. The idea is that it will help you save faster. I'm not that enthusiastic about this feature because to me, the whole point of roundups is to help you save a little bit extra money here and there, but without you really noticing. Maybe if you just use the two times multiplier, you might not notice that much of a difference, but as soon as you start using the five or 10 times multiplier, I feel like you would really start to see a big difference in the amount of money coming out of your account. And at that point, I feel like that completely defeats the point of having roundups in the first place. So to me, this perk doesn't add much value. Feature number seven allows you to see your credit score in the Monzo app. While I think this is handy, at the moment, I don't think it's groundbreaking because it only shows you your TransUnion score. What would be amazing is if they could show you your score with all three of the credit reference agencies. At the moment, to keep an eye on all three of my scores, I've had to download three separate apps on my phone. If Monzo could show us all three of our scores in one place, then I think that would be an amazing feature. But for now, it's just a little bit Meh. Feature number eight gives you access to discounts with some companies. I feel like unless you already use these companies, this feature doesn't add any value at all. If you really wanted to, you could probably find these offers somewhere online. Feature number nine allows you to withdraw up to 400 pounds abroad without having to pay any fees. With the free account, you can only withdraw up to 200 pounds and then you have to pay 3% fee on anything after that. Now, I hate using cash and I will avoid using it wherever possible. So I may sound very biased on this point, but hear me out. There are two things to mention here. Firstly, a 400 pound limit still looks pretty poor compared to Starling's unlimited fee-free withdrawals. Second, one of the best things about Monzo is how easy it is to use your card abroad. Since I've been with Monzo, every time I've been abroad, I've not even had to withdraw any cash as I can just use my card. So having a feature that increases the amount of cash that I can withdraw makes no difference as I wasn't even using the initial allowance to start with. Yes, I know we're not a cashless society yet, but as we move more and more towards being cashless, any features that include withdrawing or depositing cash just become less valuable to users as time goes on. Feature number 10 lets Monzo export your transactions as they happen to a Google Sheet. Personally, I don't mind logging into my online banking every month to export my transactions as it only takes me about three to four minutes to do it. I would say this feature is only valuable if having to log into your online banking to export your transactions is causing just enough friction that it's stopping you from doing it regularly, which means you're not keeping as much of an eye on your finances as you would like. So let me summarize what I think. I think some of the features are good, some of them have potential, and some of them just don't add any value at all. In my opinion, the perks worth paying attention to are earning 1% interest across your entire account, which means being able to use pots without having to sacrifice earning interest, being able to create custom spending categories, which will help you manage your money in a way that best suits you. And finally, being able to use virtual cards as they will help you stay safe when shopping online. As card fraud becomes more and more sophisticated, any Thing that helps make us safer is definitely valuable. The TransUnion credit tracker is good, but if they also managed to add Experian and Equifax, then it would be brilliant. Hopefully this is something they could add in the future. The rest of the perks, in my opinion, should be included in the free account or add no value at all. So to answer the question, is it worth paying for these features? Well, for five pounds a month, for me, I would say no. However, if you're going to keep at least 2,000 pounds in your account and effectively reduce the cost of Monzo Plus to 40 pounds per year or just over three pounds per month, then at that point, you can start comparing the cost to what has apparently become the universal measuring tool when it comes to money, a cup of coffee. At just over three pounds per month, 
Monzo Plus would cost you about the same as a cup of coffee would on the high street. And for that price, having those three big features that I mentioned earlier, all in one place does start to seem like a more attractive proposition. Let me know in the comments down below, based on the features that you would actually use, do you think that Monzo Plus is worth it? If you liked the video, giving it a like would be massively appreciated. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.